Yosef, Israel discovers that he is alive. <laughs> this is so good, right? So there was a great famine, and what happened? Joseph stored grain in all of these storehouses that were in the land. This is an actual uh, drawing and carving, actually, out of Saqqara, Egypt, showing how they collected the grain, and they were taking the sacks of grain out of these silos where they stored them. It's really interesting to see how the archaeology in this as well, right? So then what happens? Genesis 42, and Joseph's brothers came down, bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. Whoa, that's in fulfillment of his dream, right? The dreams that he had where they were bowed down to him and they hated him even more for those dreams. So then in Genesis 42, it continues, and one is no longer alive. So this is what Judah said to Joseph when they come back to him, not even knowing who he is yet. He's just this man in charge, and he has the food, and he's in charge of all of Egypt, and the world is coming to him to be saved because this famine's over all the face of the earth. And Judah says to Joseph, before he knows who he is, he says, and one is no longer alive. And who was he speaking of? He was speaking of Joseph. Now, why is that important? Because we're looking at how Jesus is a is pictured in Joseph's story. Jesus being the greater than Joseph, Joseph being the shadow, telling the story of Jesus, Jesus being the real thing. So watch this as we go into this. this is so exciting. So they, they, he's saying, Judah's saying he's no longer alive, but yet he lives, right? Now you see Jesus in this story. They thought Joseph was dead, including Israel, their father, but he was alive. In fact, Israel thought he was dead for all those years, but it was a lie from his brothers that he was dead. He wasn't dead. He was alive. And Joseph says to it, said to his brothers after that, he said, I am Joseph. Or you could say in Hebrew, Ani Yosef. Ani Yosef. I am Joseph. Someday, my friends, someday, Yeshua, Jesus, he will say to the Israelis, Ani, Yeshua, and they will be in shock. <laughs> and he will say, come closer, don't be afraid. And he will show them his nail-pierced hands, I believe. And I believe this is going to be one of the most beautiful moments in all of history, my friend, because the Bible speaks much about it. In fact, Zechariah chapter 12 speaks of the Jewish people coming back and weeping with him as they, they see him. They see him whom they had pierced. And each of the 12 tribes, they weep with him one by one, just like Joseph's brothers. They wept with him one by one, and it was in the Jewish tribes, the 12 tribe history and the 12 tribe order that they wept with him. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? We're looking at it right now, and we're, this is so exciting. Let's get into the rest of the presentation. We're seeing how Joseph is a type and a picture, a portrait of Jesus Christ. And we love this. This is what this channel is about. It's about using the whole Bible, all of it not just the New Testament, the Old Testament as well, to see who the Messiah is. Yeshua HaMashiach, if you're in Israel. Jesus, the Messiah. Yeshua. This is so exciting. All right, let's get into the, the presentation now. So here's those nail-pierced hands. Reaching out to you too, my friend. Not just to the brothers there, and, the, and it's for you too, personally. So we see the world, and we see that there was this great famine at this point in the story, all over the entire face of the earth, the Bible says. So the whole world was in need to live. They would have, likely all of them would have died if it wasn't for what Joseph did and putting grain in Egypt. So Genesis 42 says, the sons of Israel came to buy grain. So they came back, right? They came back to purchase this grain. 
Because their father said, what are you guys doing looking at each other? Go, go get some grain so that we may live. So there was a seven years of this great harvest before that, the seven year great harvest. And then he collected grain like the sands of the sea it was without number. Now we're seeing this time of great trouble. You could even call it Jacob's trouble or Yaakov's trouble, right? And that's what we're seeing in its seven years, which is interesting because that's the amount of time, that's the years of the great tribulation period, which you can see in Daniel and in the book of Revelation. They both spell that out, okay? You can check that out on your own if you'd like. I have other videos on it you can check out too. The the playlist on Jesus, uh, or the Revel, Revelation, the book of Revelation, and also Jesus in the Old Testament. All right, let's continue. So Genesis 42 Now, Joseph was the ruler over the land. He was the one who sold grain to all the people of the land. So here it is again. There is the silos. This is a carving in Saqqara, Egypt, showing how they would deal with the grain and distribute the grain out to the people from the storehouses. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. Whoa, 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 right? That's his dream, his God-given dreams. Some people preach that Joseph was a spoiled brat. This is wrong. The Bible does not say that. These were God-given dreams, and he was sharing what those God-given dreams were when he was younger, just like Jesus shared with Caiaphas, saying that you will see me coming at the right hand of the power. In other words, you'll be bowing down to me. (laughs) Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. All right, so we continue on in Genesis 42. When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he disguised himself to, to them and spoke harshly to them. So he starts messing with them a little bit, right? He's testing them to see what they're what's going on. But this reminds me also of Resurrection Day. Three days after Jesus was crucified in Luke chapter 24, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with these two men, or it could have been a a man and his wife as well, a married couple, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Just like Joseph, right? Their eyes were kept from recognizing him. These are Israelis that, that he's talking to here. And he says, later he rebukes them. They look sad. And they said, did, you didn't know that Jesus was crucified? We were hoping that he was the one, they said. And now Jesus says to them, you foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets had spoken. So he spoke harshly to them a little bit, right? But it's like tough love. That's how, that's what Joseph was showing his brothers. And here that's what Jesus, Yeshua, is showing his brothers, his Israeli uh, family as well. And he says here, it says, Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to come into his glory? Right? He had to suffer first. So then beginning with Moses, right, with Moshe and all the prophets, he explained to them the things written about himself in all the scriptures. What does that mean? He took the Tanakh, if you're in Israel. That means your Jewish Bible, the Old Testament for us Christians. And he took that, Jesus took that in the Tanakh. It was in the order of the Tanakh, by the way. And he taught where he was found in all of those scriptures, all of them. Wouldn't you like to have a recording of that, my friend? <laughs> I can't wait to hear that someday in heaven. It's going to be awesome. All right, let's continue on in Joseph's story. And Joseph said to them, where have you come from? He's speaking harshly to them. And, he, and they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. So he was calling them spies and other things like that. So he's kind of messing with them here. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he had of them. Remember those beautiful dreams where they bowed down? Those were from God. And yet he said to them, no, but you have come to look at the undefended parts of our land. So he's accusing them of being spies. But they said, your servants are 12 brothers and all the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. So they're, they're trying to present that they're not spying out the land. They're, they're innocent, right? And behold, the youngest is with our father today, they tell him, and one is no longer alive. Whoa. So they believe Joseph was dead. That's what they believed. 
just like Israel today for the most part, right? They believe that Jesus is dead. They believe he's long gone out of their lives, but this is not true. He's alive. Jesus is alive right now, my friend. And at the end of this episode, if you don't believe in him, you will have an opportunity to put your trust and your faith in God the Son, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, and you could be saved. You could be born again to new life, my friend. He promises that to you. All right. So let's get into the, the further on into this, uh, the presentation here into the scripture. And one is no longer alive, they said to him, but he, he lives, yet he lives. <laughs> you can't find Jesus buried anywhere, my friend. They've tried, many, many who don't believe have tried to find his grave and it, it's never happened. He's not in the grave. Buddha's in the grave. Muhammad's in the grave. All these other fake gods are in the grave, but guess what? Jesus is not in the grave. <laughs> All right, so truly, they said to Joseph, truly, we are guilty. Later, actually, this is when they were talking among each other, and they said, truly, we are guilty concerning our brother because we saw the distress of his soul when he pleaded with us. Whoa. A lot of Zechariah in there, right? Like Zechariah 12. Yet we would not listen. For that reason, his, this distress has come upon us. So they're starting to realize that they're guilty of what they did many, many, many years ago. They did not know, however, that Joseph understood, right? Because he was using an interpreter between them, for there was an interpreter, right? So Joseph is, is just listening in on what they're saying because he understood Hebrew. <laughs> he could speak Egyptian and Hebrew at this point. Then he turned away from them and wept. Oh, Joseph loved his brothers. He wasn't angry at his brothers. He loved them. But when he returned to them and spoke to them, he took Simeon from among them and bound him before their eyes. So he took one of them and bound them. And now, this is interesting. Check this out. This is a wall painting from Saqqara, Egypt. And these guys here, they believe, were Joseph's brothers. Some scholars believe that, archaeologists. And they're wearing new clothing. And they're coming back with these Egyptians to an oversized official over here. You can't see it in this picture. But over here in the background, you see a painting. And this is the yellow pigment that they used for the Hebrew people. And right here, there was a man who was bound. Now, was this Joseph? Was this a wall painting showing the story of Joseph? And was this him? Or was this Simeon who was bound as the brothers come back? We don't know. But it's interesting, is it not, that this place where they think Joseph may have been in Saqqara, Egypt, you see this wall painting. So Joseph has Simeon bound. Here's a, a nice globe uh, a picture of the world, right? Right here, you could see Egypt at the northeast part of Africa there. And right here is Israel, which is like at the center of the world because you have Europe, you have Asia, and you have Africa. And this would be like the center of everything right here, Jerusalem and Israel. Now, Jerusalem would be the center of Israel, right? So let's take a look. Trip one, this is where they, they come down, they get grain from Egypt, and then they go back to Israel. And that's where we are in the story here. So let's keep can, walk, going through the scripture in Genesis. Genesis 43, now the famine was severe in the land. So it was severe, it got worse and worse. Just like the tribulation period in Revelation and in Daniel, the, especially in Revelation, you see that it gets worse and worse and worse and worse as it continues on in that seven-year period until what? Until Jesus comes back and touches foot on the Mount of Olives and returns to the earth to rule and reign for a thousand years from Jerusalem. So, so that's what happens in Revelation, this, this great time of trouble, or you could even say Jacob's trouble. And the earth, it got worse and worse. The, the famine was severe. So it came about when they had finished eating the grain which they had brought from Egypt, right, on that first trip, that their father said to them, so Yaakov, Jacob, right, he says to them, go back, buy us a little food 
or we're going to die, <laughs> right? So here's trip two. They go from the land of Canaan, right, which later became Israel. From their father Israel, they come down back into Egypt to get more food. This is trip number two. When Joseph came home, so they came back, and Joseph has his servant put them in his palace, in his home, his brothers. He has them wait for him there. And when Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the gift which was in their hand. So their father had them bring a gift to Joseph, pistachio nuts and and other things as a gift to this ruler of all of Egypt. And they bowed down to the ground before him. Right? Now watch this. And as he raised his eyes, as Joseph raised his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, he hadn't seen him yet, his mother's son. Now can you imagine this? His mother's son. What does he see, my friend? He sees his mother in his little brother, I'm sure. And what does he do after that? It says here, he said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? And they said, Yes, this is. And what happens after that? Joseph then hurried out, for he was deeply stirred over his brother, and he looked for a place to weep. So he entered his chamber and wept there. Wow. This is a very emotional moment, right, for Joseph. And then, and when he, he washed his face and he came out, he controlled himself and said, serve the meal. So Joseph had his brothers sit down at this table in birth order, right? So Reuben being the firstborn, and then in birth order, he has them sit down all the way to who? To Benjamin, the last born brother. Because Joseph was the 11th brother. Benjamin, right? He was the 12th brother, completing the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, what's interesting about that is Paul. Or he was Saul, right? Originally as the Pharisee. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He's the only apostle where we get information about which tribe he's from. And he's from the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin. Now, why is that important? Because Jesus was, he, Joseph was the picture of Jesus. Joseph was the 11th, right? Born into Israel. And then after that, Benjamin. Well, we see Paul being a picture of that because he was spreading the good news about Jesus and he was different than the other brothers. Just a little side note, thought it was interesting, right? So let's continue, guys. All right, so so he couldn't control himself. He wept, and then he comes back in, cleans off. He comes back in, and he says, serve the meal. So they're having a meal together in his palace. Now they were seated before him from the firstborn according to his birthright to the youngest according to his youth, and the men looked at one another in astonishment. They noticed it, right? They saw what was going on. Then Joseph could not control himself in front of everyone standing before him. And he shouted, have everyone leave me, right? Everyone except for who? His brothers. So now it's just the Hebrews together. It's Joseph, Yosef, and his brothers. So there was no one with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. Then he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard about it. Wow. This is an amazing picture. Look at that. Imagine that. And Joseph said to his brothers, as he wept loudly, he said to his brothers, I am. I am Joseph. Oh, his brothers were shocked. Their, their jaws must have dropped, right? They were dismayed. They thought he was dead, long gone, out of their lives, all those many, many years. 
And here you see the, the 12 sons of Israel in birth order at the palace, having a feast with this man who's in charge of it all. And it's their brother whom they thought was dead, long gone, out of their lives. And he says to them, in Hebrew, he says, Ani Yosef. I am Joseph. Whoa, what this is so powerful, my friend. Here it is, Ani Yosef. Someday, my friend, someday, Yeshua is going to say the same thing to Israel. He's going to say, Ani Yeshua. And they will weep together. This is recorded in Zechariah chapter 12. Check it out. But it's also recorded right here with Joseph because he is a portrait, a painting, a type, and a foreshadowing of who? Yeshua, Jesus. Isn't that amazing, my friend? Wow. So good. Look at this continues on here. So let's continue. I know that was a powerful moment, but yet he lives. They realize he's alive. Guess what, my friend? Jesus is alive right now. And then it continues, his brothers could not answer him for they were terrified in his presence. I'll bet they were. (laughs) Then Joseph said to his brothers, and look at the grace in this. Look at his mercy and grace, his tender heartedness that Joseph had. And that Hebrew word would be chesed. Chesed, right? Loyalty, tender heartedness, tender mercies, loving kindness, and tender mercy. And Joseph said to his brothers, please come closer. And they came closer to him. And what does he say to them? And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold to Egypt. Now here's what's beautiful. Now do not be graved, grieved, excuse me, or angry with yourselves. You sold me here because you sold me here, for God sent me ahead of you to save lives. Think about that for one moment. Jesus, Yeshua, can say the same thing to the Hebrews someday, to Israel. Don't be angry. And don't grieve or or be angry with yourselves because you sold me down the road and wanted to be crucified, right? For God sent me ahead of you to save lives. And later he says, this was God's doing, not yours. Because they go over it, he goes over it with his brothers again. Jesus, Yeshua, he is reaching out to you, my friend. He loves you. Look at those nail-pierced hands. Those were for you. He thought of you when he died on that cross. He did it willingly. He could have just blinked his eyes. Everybody would have been dead that was crucifying him. He didn't do that. Why? Because he wanted to fulfill the mission to save many alive as it is this day. Those were nail-pierced hands, and those nail-pierced hands are where you, my friend, are written in his book. This is where you're written in his book of life, and you're written on the palm. It says he has you scribed on the palm of his hands. You, if you're a believer. If you're not, What are you waiting for? Become a believer in Jesus. He loves you. He is your Messiah if you're in Israel. The Old Testament, your scriptures, the Tanakh, it speaks all about him. The books of Moses, the prophets, and the the Proverbs, and the Psalms, all of it speaks of him. And he's waiting for you, my friend, to, to receive him. And someday, the Bible says, someday all of Israel will recognize him and realize who he is. Zechariah makes it clear. They say, who, who gave you these wounds? And he, he says, my friends did that. Later in Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 12, he says, they will look on him whom they pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for a newborn. Each of the 12 tribes, they mourn for him, with him, just like Joseph's brothers. 
the same thing happens. And we're going to do that in the next episode. This is so beautiful, you guys. Jesus loves you. Yeshua loves you, my friend. What are you waiting for? If you have not been saved, you could give your life to him right now. You could say this prayer after me from your heart to God, to Hashem, if you're in Israel. He's listening. You just need to receive Yeshua as your Lord and as your Savior and as God the Son. He is God the Son. Would you like to do that? Would you like to receive Jesus and be born again? Well, say this prayer after me from your heart to God. You will be praying to God, right? Let's pray. You, you repeat these words after me. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin. I choose to turn from my sin and to follow you. I believe that Jesus died on that cross and shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days he was raised from the dead and that he is alive today. I choose to follow him as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my friend. Congratulations. You are now a child of God. You will go to heaven. Make sure you are in fellowship with other believers, going to a Bible-believing church and getting fellowship and praying every day. If you're in Israel, my friend, go to One for Israel or Jews for Jesus or the So Be It videos here on YouTube. You can check that out. But One for Israel and Jews for Jesus have great resources. They'd be willing to help you in your walk, in your relationship with Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. I love you. God bless you guys. Don't forget, hit this playlist right here and you will see all the other episodes of Joseph and how he's like Jesus and also how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. Don't forget to do that.